Well, thank you very much. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. This is a great opportunity for our city too, isn't it? A mayor race brings accountability. Because of it, elected officials like us have to go to you and say, how can we do a better job? How can Malden be a better place to live? For now, the power and the issues shift back to the people. It is your job to hold us accountable. My opponent has had eight years to run the city his way with his policies. And over the past few months, you've heard a lot of new policies and promises, but this time, you don't have to rely on words. You can look at the record. I'm gonna go off script a little bit. I had some stuff about blue bags and, and other stuff that you've probably already heard in this debate. But he mentioned something to me about how he doesn't offer any explanation of how he's gonna pay for it. Well, let me tell you something. There are a lot of avenues our city could pursue. One of those is zero interest loans from the MWRA. Okay, that's our resource authority for water. Instead of going there for the interest loan, zero interest loan, he went to you residents. He cranked up your water and sewer bill through his three member appointed commission that meets in his office to the point that we have $9 million over and above your actual consumption sitting in an account. You lost the time value of your money when the MWRA was offering a zero interest loans for nothing. We could have availed ourselves of those loans for our water and sewer infrastructure and our lead pipes. I'm not gonna cut teachers. I mean, that's, that's, what a, that's what a demagogue would tell you. But listen, before this race happened, you didn't hear a peep from him about open space, Malden River, or affordable housing. You're hearing it now because the power is shifted to the voters. In fact, he opposed open space and promised Malden Hospital to a developer even after 80% of residents opposed it. Last October, he signed a pact with MAPC to bring in more apartments. These things are only changing now because of this race. Whether you like the idea of an addiction recovery center or not in Malden, he didn't bother to tell you about it until last week because he thought it would get him more votes. That's a fact. That's a conversation and information that we should all have. So let's not focus on campaign talk, let's focus on the record. The best predictor of future performance is past experience. The last eight years is a record of blue trash bags, dense apartment development, more traffic, Millions of fines, new fines in our residents, soaring water bills, yet still the most lead pipes in the state and 200 fire hydrants that need to be repaired. It's a record of broken roads and broken promises. When business is booming for our neighbors at Station Landing and Assembly Row, we're missing out on the benefits of the best economy of our lives. Don't be fooled again. November 5th will be here soon and the power will shift back from the people and we may not get a chance like this again. I'm running for Malden because Malden needs change now. I knew that if I didn't stand up, he would eventually prevail at Malden Hospital and the community would be ruined by another large development and more traffic. I gave up my council seat, Ward 3, where I was born and raised, and my chance at a pension, and my law office to run this race. I have spent $50,000 of my own money over the years educating voters. It, this hasn't been easy on me. I didn't get donations from developers or come up through the political system like Gary did. He's worked for, in politics for a couple decades, made a couple million dollars doing it. I made my own way through against great odds and never made any money doing it. This is a chance to use all of my education, my experience, and everything I'm made of to do a lot of good for a lot of people. That's why I'm here. It's time to bring the mayor's seat back to the people and start a new day in Malden. A chance to give residents the future they want for their own community and not simply be passengers along for the ride. Instead of an administration designed to glorify the mayor with pitches and press stories, we will hire a full translation staff to help our diverse population enjoy the full benefits of life in Malden. We'll educate people and empower them with facts and give them a voice. That's how I secured the $1 million to fix our most deadly intersection in Highland Avenue, Fellsway East, where the accidents were cranking up our insurance rates. We'll take advantage of this great economy while there's still time. Instead of promoting a mayor, we'll promote a city that's perfectly situated to become the next thriving business hub of Metro North and give the taxpayers a break for once. So I ask you, with everything you've heard, consider that this is your city. This is your future. You're gonna have to live with the policies of the next four or more years. You may not get this chance again. So I know we can do better. Let your voice be heard. Encourage your neighbors to get out and vote.
talk to your neighbors, and if you do that, we'll all win. I greatly appreciate your vote.